Look at you, both of you, all in green. I know. Happy birthday, <laughs> Roma. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Great to be with you both. Oh, lovely to see you guys. How are you doing? Okay. We're just doing great. Really well, really well, thank you. We're both a long way away from Belfast and Derry on St. Patrick's Day, right? I know, I know, but... When know. were you last home? Do you have something green on, I hope? Um, yes, but you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, I'm, we're wearing our Tourism Ireland uh, shamrock, and we have to remind all of our American viewers, of course, of the shamrock St. Patrick picked to denote three leaves from one stem for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So there you go. Yeah. Not, a, not, not a four-leafed clover. No, I know. I mean, everything gets so turned upside down here. It's all beer and leprechauns, right? And know, Easter yeah. bunnies with eggs and, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah but, I know. Um, I, have, I have to ask you both, being St. Patrick's Day, is there a favorite food? that you will be eating today and who's going to do the cooking? Um, well, it's actually in the kitchen right now is corned beef and cabbage is being made right now. <laughs> Very good. What are you, what's on your menu? <laughs> we're later this evening, we're going to be with friends and we're eating Irish bangers and mash. <laughs> Lovely. And there, our friends are doing the cooking for us, so that's even better. Um, and and I think we've cooked some wheat and bread, so we'll be uh, uh, a little oh, authentic. God. We're trying our best. It's very hard. Any, <laughs> any, anyway, it's a it's a wonderful St Patrick's Day Irish blessing to have uh, our friends Mark and Roma here with us, and we're hoping to get uh, some insights from you about the. Uh, forthcoming film, Resurrection, which uh, premieres on the 27th of March, I think, on Discovery Plus. Yes. So we're very much hoping everybody is going to tune in and, and look at this incredible movie. We've had the, uh, the blessing of already catching a sneak preview yeah. of it. Thank you. And it was, it was very powerful to be able to, to, to watch. Um, but we do want to hear a little bit about the producer's eye view mm -hmm. of watching, you know, Jesus's predestined, you know, walk through pain and suffering to resurrection and then empowering uh, his followers and the Holy Spirit coming. It was just such a thrilling uh, new take on very familiar stories, I guess. But I suppose starting uh, from the, a different perspective, why did you choose to make this film? Well, you know, listen, look at the year that we've all come through. It's been probably the most challenging year that we've ever had, right, collectively. Mm -hmm. And uh, and really, Mark and I wanted to be able to provide something that would celebrate and help refocus on the story of hope. And this is the greatest story of hope that there ever was. So we went back into our library of footage and we were able to work with our editor and, uh, and put together this marvelous 90 minute experience, craft this film together of the resurrection. We had hoped up until about Christmas that maybe we would be able to put it in theaters, but um, it became apparent that the theaters wouldn't be open for a, for a while yet. And, um, and so we looked about and we were delighted that we were able to find a partnership with Discovery Plus to air it and allow it to be seen from the safety and comfort of your own home. So it'll be on Discovery Plus, as you mentioned, starting at the beginning of Holy Week and then playing all through the Easter season. It's wonderful. Well, it, it, uh, I'm interested to hear about the process because I'm thinking, you know, from looking at it, that you must have had to immerse yourselves, you and the, the writing team and the, all of the, the others involved would have had to have immersed yourselves in scripture uh, to really uh, 
understand and bring alive the story the way that you you have in doing so um you know that's no mean feat in doing so you know have you found that that scripture has impacted upon you has it amended changed improved your own relationships with the lord and your your walk with him by going through this process oh for sure you know um right from the beginning in from 2011 when we started making the bible series right on through son of god ad and now resurrection when you are working on a, a film or a series like this it's very incumbent on to make sure what you remember as biblical is in fact correct. And we've worked with over 40 different consultants, reading scripts. And wow. as you know, in the Christian faith, they don't all agree on things that seem obvious, um, but we managed to navigate our way through. But what it does do, it really brings home a few things. One thing it brings home very much is the supernatural nature of Jesus, yeah. God, and the Holy Spirit. Um, and because really, there's no way it should have worked. Twelve guys, their leader dies, resurrects, no one believes them, and suddenly around the world you blink, we're in 2021, and 2.5 billion of us, different denominations, but all followers of Christ. It's supernatural. And what this movie shows is that supernatural elements, coupled with human fear, the disciples, none of them remembered or believed he would come back to life on the third day. And we're all ready to run away. They were all going to run away. In fact, Peter betrayed him. He denied him three times and didn't even show up at the cross. And there's a great scene yeah. we have in the upper room after the crucifixion where John, uh, the Blessed Mother, and Mary Magdalene were in the upper room, and Peter returns, and he's ashamed. He's ashamed. He denied Jesus yeah. three times and ran away. He wasn't even there for the crucifixion. Slowly, the other disciples all come to the upper, upper room, and their whole thought is for themselves. They're going to kill us next. We have to run away. Let's go back to Galilee. Get out of Dodge. Get out of Jerusalem. But of course, they decide to give it the three days, because Blessed Mother had said, you at least owe it three days. He said he would resurrect. You know, and of course he does. And then the, the authorities do not believe it. There's a great scene, biblical, from John, um, where Caiaphas the, the chief priest gives money to the temple guards to lie and say they saw the disciples stealing the body. So this is a different way of looking at it. It's very biblical, but it's very human. These are not one-dimensional Sunday school characters. These are real people, real fears. They thought they were next to be killed. Of course, they all did die, well, except for um, John on Patmos, but everybody else got martyred and had to die for Jesus. And it works. Today, there's 2.5 billion of us. Praise the Lord. <laughs> billion. Yeah. That's terrific. That's terrific. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Roma. And I have to say, Mark and I, throughout your movie, we really felt we got to know Peter and we felt we got to, to know John. And in scriptures, um, Peter talks about being you know, an eyewitness of his majesty. He couldn't help talking about all that he had seen and all that he had heard so as eyewitnesses yourselves you know in the making of the movie and filming it behind the camera what was it like when you had to like film and be eyewitnesses to harrowing scenes like the crucifixion of Jesus I mean the crucifixion in particular we've we've had the uh, um, opportunity three times in our careers as producers to oversee uh, a crucifixion setting. Wow. And I have to say that each time it's been equally painful and this is just a reenactment, you know? But um, it, to, to be at the foot of the cross and to imagine, you know, like, like a little bit of what the horror of that must have been, obviously particularly for Jesus, but also for the mother of Jesus mm. too. Yeah, have to stand there. You know, as, as a mother myself, I can't imagine a mother's heart um, having to stand and watch your own son be murdered so horribly and the courage and strength that it took, it must have taken for her to remain there. But I, I would imagine she wanted him to be able to see the face of love 
when he looked down from the cross. And we know that he said seven things from the cross. And one of those things was that he took the time to love his mother and mm -hmm. make sure that he was going to be okay when he says to John, here is your mother, here is your son. Um, so that that scene is always, I think, a, a particularly hard one, very hard one for the actor, of course, you I'm know, sure. that you prepare yourself for, for such a moment. But um, uh, but it is, you know, working with the great teams of people, production designers and costume designers and building the set and trying to create an authentic world that we really would invite you, the audience, to step in almost like you are there yourself. And we have found that now because of the films, and you have new images in your head when you go back mm. to scripture and when you read the Bible again, it like brings a different kind of aliveness, don't you find, to reading it scripture does, when you, so you have a, a, a pictorial image for it. Yeah, I, ha I, have, to, I have to say, uh, I, I go to a Bible study group on a Saturday morning often and, and I will say, you know, we need our friends Mark and Roma here because they have such a gift of bringing a lie some of these scriptures. I remember in one of your earlier uh, productions when Jesus bent down and threw in the sand and mm -hmm. to draw all eyes to him and away from the woman caught in adultery who was perhaps, you know, a, a, a um, maybe partly closed, who knows? But it was a beautiful act of compassion. And you, you, you're, you and the team are so good at helping us with those things. And we were really struck. We were struck about Peter's torments, as Mark, you, mm. you kind of described it. You know, his, his palpable grief uh, at having denied his Lord and, and knew it. Even the, the, the look that Jesus and he exchanged when, when uh, Jesus was under trial, no words needed to be exchanged. And Peter, of course, you know, thought, his chance of forgiveness was, was gone. He couldn't say sorry. He, he, to him, Jesus had died. And uh, they ran back so quickly to the fishing uh, to, to run away. And it does bring that beautiful scene on the shores of, of Lake Tiberias. When I, I can only imagine here was, here was a bystander on the shore shouting out to professional fishermen to tell them how to catch fish. I wonder, are there lessons for us all, like business people, filmmakers, you know, how do you react when God is directing you to do something that in business sense makes no sense? Well, probably that happened with us to make the Bible in the first place. Two things were advised. One was don't make the Bible series because it will hurt your big careers in Hollywood. Hollywood won't like that and you'll get less work. In fact, the opposite happened. Our careers just exploded with the Holy Spirit and supernatural. Also, they said, don't work together on it because your marriage won't survive. And we've thrived, not survived. So, you know, a friend of ours once said, a pastor, the most dangerous prayer you can ever pray is, Lord, use me because he just may do that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, uh, but, and we also had heard, uh, Mark, that that God doesn't always call the qualified, yeah, mm. but but He qualifies the called, you know. And mm. so we were just so grateful that each step of the way, uh, if we didn't know how to do something, and there were many things we didn't know how to do, but we find somebody excellent who knew how to do it excellently, and and thus a great team was built, you know, because it takes a village, doesn't it, to do anything and you know all the marvelous people that came together to create this movie with us to make resurrection possible we're grateful to all of them yes well i, I think about that that on the beach scene and then you know G jesus is the creator of the universe is cooking breakfast for his team their, their servant leadership for you and uh, it leads to that you know incredible moment of of reconciliation and restoration and you know recalling of all the disciples but particularly of of peter and i just wonder you know what you know you've learned what we can all learn from you know the heavy lifting that jesus did it all he made it easy for peter in in that process and uh, what lessons you know in in 
in forgiveness? What lessons uh, in reconciliation can we learn to apply in the world of creative industry, of business, of, of life in general? Well, make it easy. I'm not sure he made it easy for Peter because he said to him, you love me, do you love me, you love me. And by the way, you're going to die for me. So now, if you're ever going to terrify someone, however, remember, in some ways, it was easier for the 12 because they actually spent three years with him. They then realized he came back to life. He actually resurrected. And then they had 40 days of him telling them the mysteries and the secrets that we don't know. Because remember, it's a big supernatural mystery. And our job is to have full of faith. And so I, I think also what I've taken away from this is the importance of forgiveness because it's throughout the Bible, certainly, especially throughout the New Testament. And if you don't have the ability to really forgive people, right. you'll be carrying that awfulness in you and won't be able to operate to your fullest extent of receiving the Holy Spirit. So we've, we've, we've been so immersed in this for so many years. I've got to tell you, it's such fun. It is terrifying, but it's also fun to make biblical products because you know you're going to get analyzed. Did you get it right? Did you get it wrong? I mean, so so many things. Like, I mean, there's so many scenes in this that we've very careful. Like, like on the cross, the fact that Jesus' legs were not broken, the fact that we made a big deal in this movie about Isaiah's prophecy, and the fact that Caiaphas, because of giving well, Joseph at Arathea, gave him his tomb, so he'll, he'll go into a rich man's tomb, and how Caiaphas said, what are you doing? You're going to fulfill the prophecy and give them the excuse this really happened. And, and Joseph said, I'm not fulfilling a prophecy. I'm just having common decency of providing someone I didn't think was guilty a tomb. But all these nods to biblical factual information from scriptures will help people who are not necessarily churched <clears throat> and, and don't necessarily know the Bible or had a chance. This is a way to have a really accessible way to learn the greatest story ever told. And here we have, not often you see a Bible series or film go into Acts of the Apostles. Oh, yeah. And of course, here we have, after the resurrection, it goes into the Acts of the Apostles. Like right. the fact that Caiaphas bribed the temple guards to lie about Jesus, pretending the disciples stole the body that is in the Bible. It says right at the end of John. So people can look at, we, we like it when people get in touch with us and say, wow, watch that. And I wasn't sure if you got that right. And I went and looked it up and sure enough, you were right. It's like, if you remember in the Bible series, when there was a scene where King David uh, and Saul was chasing King David and Saul went to pee in a cave to relieve himself. And there was a scene that, and like, why did you put that in there? That's in the Bible. That Saul was relieving himself in a cave when David came up behind him and cut a piece of his cloth. There's so many little things that people, these details, we love to find the details of the accurate Bible stories, right. place them within multi dimensional real characters who are just like us. And we can see the love of Christ through people just like us. Yes. Of course, Dr. Luke gives us so many of those details because he was a detailed person. I love that. Uh, of, of acts and uh, but i know karen you have something you wanted to ask I don't have, if we do have time for for one more question it's um you know when when jesus started his ministry and throughout his his work he said follow me and sort of now today in in this generation every time we lift our phones somebody is saying follow me so i was very struck i was very engaged in uh, the scene towards the end of your movie where we see peter and john very briefly, you're proclaiming the name of Jesus boldly in the temple. And immediately they have 5,000 new followers for Jesus. So I'm just, um, you, can you share with us very quickly your top tip on how you truly engage your audience for the kingdom of God through your work in TV and media and film? Um, well, I know for my part with Lightworkers, which is our, our company, 
and the production company that has made all this content, we all ha also have a very robust social platform. And I know that social media has gotten a, a very bad name recently, and for good reason, because Twitter is, you know, can be a very cruel and mean spirited place to hang out in. But we're committed at Lightworkers to continually adding positivity, encouragement, love, light. You know, if you come into our feed on any given day, you'll find some scripture, you'll find something uplifting. And that's our commitment. So that's one thing that we that we do uh, to to continue. I also have a um, a morning devotional that I write and record, and it's just very short. Um, it's a minute or two minutes long at the most, and they're just reflections. Um, and they're set to beautiful nature videos and music. And, and again, we post those out on the Lightworker Social. So we're just trying to use social media as a positive, as a way just to remind people that they're not alone, that there's other good people in the world doing good things. And, um, you know, and then personally on my own social media, uh, I never saw a sunset or a sunrise that I didn't love. I could never get tired of looking at the beginning of a day or the end of the day. Mark's always going, are you out there videotaping that again? And then what I like to do is I just put them up on my social media and I add just a little piece of scripture. Yes. And I just think well, that's just another way of just sharing. You know, we were all commissioned, weren't we? He asked all of us. He said, go tell everyone. Right. Share the word, you know, and there's ways, you know, when we're working on a big project, obviously that's a big way we can do that. Mm -hmm. But in the everydayness of my life, I just try to find wee little ways that we can do that as well. Yeah. And so we would ask anybody watching, you know, often we're asked, how can, how can you help us? You know, like if we have all received the Great Commission, we've made a movie, but the movie, if it just sits there and nobody sees it, you know, we mightn't have bothered making a movie. So we really need the audience to show up and and they won't show up unless they know about it. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're so grateful for you joining us, uh, uh, guys, to help share the word that the film is, is going to be available for everybody this Easter. Well, that is our, that's our prayer for you both. Yeah. And for it, that it will be, you've already captured it beautifully, that it will be a tool that will be used afresh uh, for new audiences to learn about Jesus who haven't heard before. And perhaps for those who have lost their first love, that, that it will be rekindled by your creativity and uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we do pray for that success and we pray uh, for, for many people to see it and to use it to, to share Jesus. But we thank you. We thank you. And the movie, the movie is called Resurrection. 27th of March, Discovery Plus. Yes, correct. That's it. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thanks, we guys. Look Thank you. We look forward to seeing you Love soon. You God bless you. God bless. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.